Um, I'm in uh, this building as a fan. Um, I've never turned down a DFID request to speak here. The DFID people here are probably sick of me actually cropping up here every now and again and saying it. But, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've got a quote here from Woody Allen. More than any other time in history, mankind faces a crossroads. One path leads to despair and utter hopelessness, the other to total extinction. Let us pray we have the wisdom to choose correctly. <laughs> Without the MDGs, that isn't so far off the track. And for those of us who have to do uh, what Douglas has talked about, advocate what you guys have to implement, it's difficult. You have to find <clears throat> the rhetoric, you have to find the words that tell what the MDGs mean to say. And the MDGs, of course, is one of the worst acronyms ever invented. It's rather like DFID, you know. I mean, the day of the DFIDs, you know, people kind of wonder what's going on, you know. They're going to absorb and suck Africa out of existence or something. Um, but going back, it's an incredible idea it's almost the invention of the 21st century happened by pure chance in that most unlikely of organizations, the United Nations. But there, of course, there wasn't an unlikely man. There's Kofi Annan there, who I'm proud to say is not only a colleague but a friend and of most of us here as well. And it was decided in the year 2000 that mankind would give itself this elegant, gift, that it would pull half the world's people out of extreme poverty, half of those suffering from that preposterous condition that does none of us any good. Why half? Because it was deemed possible, it was deemed politically viable that we could raise the game enough that we could pull people into the productive capacity of the planet and thus making it better for all of us. The incredible thing that you've been talking about here today is just how far that preposterous idea has come. Douglas and Gordon referred to Glen Eagles and the Commission for Africa. The day afterwards, um, I was asked, did I think it would be done that the G8, the politicians, never do anything? And I was said, well, we weren't going to let up on it, and here we are. 2010, we won't know exactly until next year, but so far, 60% of what they said they would do, they've done. Debt has been cancelled. We know what's occurred because of that, but more immediately, in Africa, where I was with Dominique Strauss-Kahn and Prime Minister Dinga and Prime Minister Mellas of Ethiopia at the weekend, it was pointed out by Strauss-Kahn that Africa has been able to weather part of the economic crisis through, another, through a fiscal stimulus, but paid for by themselves. The IMF were not called in, and that's largely as a result of the debt, debt cancellation of 2005. This is phenomenal, and it goes to the modern world, not the world that the BBC and the others tried to drag us back to of 25 years ago, the horror, the terrors, the wars, the brutality and the indifference. No, not that world. This is the world of the 21st century, where we must replace that past world with a different idea. And that idea must be cooperation rather than competition. This must be the new political paradigm. There is no other option. And the G20 is the model for that. If we are forced into this idea. And we need to expand, expand that idea. And if we're going to go forward from the summit in September at the UN, where Obama promises to make a keynote speech on how to exactly deliver America's part of the bargain for the MDGs, and perhaps set new bars and new standards, we have to coordinate our efforts. Because again, bizarrely, so many different units are working towards the, the MDGs, the UN, the EU, many actors. And I don't think there is a better 
coordination agency. I don't think anyone has earned or deserves the right to coordinate that and bring it to fruition than the people at Diffid. I know many of you come from outside Diffid, but I doubt if you go anywhere in the world where there are the poor and the suffering and when governments talk about what's possible. It comes from here. It's a fantastic outfit. It must be so energising to have gone into the civil service or indeed politics and actually do it. See it. Lives bettered. Countries sucked into the productivity of the planet. Human beings turned on. Brains made alive, electrified with their own creativity, intellectualism, dynamism, productivity, creativity, and plugged into the rest of us. That's to our advantage. We do this out of self-interest too. It is not enough just to have the moral component, which is why the business part of this is so critical. The Chinese have shown us it is true trade. Doha must be completed, and it must be completed for those in whose name it was called, the poor. And it can be done. This is not a difficult thing. But there is not a single person standing in this atrium that doesn't know the headwinds we face. For this department, politically, there's the carping at the budget here. There's a grab from the Ministry of Defence and the Foreign Office. It must remain utterly independent, for without question, it is perhaps the best department of government that this government has. And it can prove it. You're here. You've come to talk about the world's problems here in this building. They're the best at what they do. When you make a promise as a leader, when you make a promise as a leader to the poor, when you make a promise as a leader to the poor and you sign your name on that agreement in Glen Eagles, you turn a communique into a compact. And you don't sign the name Silvio Berlusconi or Jacques Chirac. You don't sign the position that you hold. What you are signing, to be clear, is the honour and the dignity of the country you have the privilege to represent. And when you break that promise, you break that honour. And without question, it is the most sacred promise a leader can make, because it is the promise of the poor to the rich, the strong to the weak. You can't break that promise. But what you decide at this conference is critical. And what me and my friends will do is we'll take it out there and argue for it. Where we disagree, we disagree as friends. But the aim is the same. It isn't fair. It isn't right. And it need not be that people are ill, hurt, put upon, beaten up by circumstance. That is a preposterous notion by which we live our life. I don't accept it. You don't accept it. This conference is the route out of that acceptance to 2015. And if we don't make 2015, we'll make 2016. And if 2016 doesn't work, there'll be 2017. But get there we will, get there we will, because if we don't, then none of this is worth living.